Vaxholm is one of the most famous places in the Stockholm archipelago, and it's just one hour from Stockholm. But what can you do at Vaxholm? That's what I'm gonna find out today. Vaxholm is a small town in the Stockholm archipelago, and also the name of the municipality. The island that the town is located on is called Vaxön, the Wax Island. It has nothing to do with candle wax though. The name is based on an old Swedish word vax that means fertile. Vikings settled on some of the islands around here a bit over a thousand years ago, on the island of Rinde for example. But the main island, this island Vaxön, wasn't populated until the 1200s. It has a very strategic position in the Stockholm archipelago. There have been defensive fortifications here since the 1500s. In the 16th century, King Gustav Vasa decided that there should be a fort here to protect the entrance to Stockholm from the Baltic. That fort still remains here today, the Vaxholm Fortress. However, it doesn't look like it did in 1548. The fortress was completely rebuilt in 1833, so what you see here is a relatively modern fortification. Either way, it's still one of the most noticeable features of Vaxholm. Vaxholm Fortress lies in the strait between the islands of Vaxön and Rinde, and the only way to get there is by boat. You can go with your own boat or take one of the archipelago boats. Or you can take one of these electrical line ferries, but these only depart in summer. It costs 100 crowns for a round trip to the fortress. This is actually the very last day that this ferry departs this year. It's the last day of summer in Stockholm, so let's make sure we enjoy it. For hundreds of years, Vaxholm Fortress was successful in fending off both Danish and Russian invaders, but eventually it was made obsolete. New weapons and new cannons made older types of fortifications like this pretty much useless. It's said that the Prussian general Count von Moltke only laughed twice in his life. Once was when his mother-in-law died, and the other was when he visited Vaxholm Fortress. Unfortunately, it's not true. It's just a myth that's been attributed to Vaxholm Fortress as well as Varberg Fortress in Sweden. However, something that is true is that Count von Moltke is the world's oldest recorded voice. He was born in 1800, and they recorded phonograph cylinders of him quoting Shakespeare and Goethe in 1889. Now you know. Vaxholm Fortress has a lot of activities for groups of people. Escape rooms and also something called Prisoners of the Fortress, where you have to solve puzzles as a group. The problem is that those are, well, group activities, so if you're just a couple of people, you won't be able to try them out. Or if you come here alone, like me today. But there are still some things I can check out by myself at the fortress. Art galleries, for example, and a museum. Vaxholm Fortress actually has the biggest museum in the entire Stockholm archipelago. But then again, I'm not sure if that says all that much. I guess we'll just have to check it out and see what we can find. A visit to the museum costs 100 Swedish crowns, and it's a good way to get information about Swedish defenses in the archipelago from the 1500s up until today. Just beware that all the information on the plaques in the museum are in Swedish, so make sure you ask for information in English when you buy your tickets.
1647, Vaxholm got its city privileges from Christina, Queen of Sweden, but it seems like the paperwork got lost. It wasn't until 1841 that the king officially declared Vaxholm a city so that they could send a representative to the Swedish parliament. But Vaxholm has had a recognized coat of arms since 1690, and that typically doesn't happen for places that aren't official cities. So the actual legality of when Vaxholm got its city privileges is unknown. And that means that Vaxholm has the dubious claim to fame of being the only post-medieval city in Sweden that doesn't know when it was founded. Not that you can call it a city these days, of course. These days it's mostly a place for wealthy people to buy a house and for tourists to visit. Vaxholm municipality actually has the 8th highest income per capita in Sweden. But it's probably most known as a tourist destination. Tourists actually started to come here by boat way back in the 1850s. So why do people visit Vaxholm? There's a lot of water-related activities in Vaxholm. Obviously, since it's in the archipelago. You can fish, rent kayaks or stand-up paddle boards, and do a lot of sailing. It's also a popular place for swimming and lounging by the beach, when it's warm enough. Some popular beaches include Tianö Badet at Bogesund, Eriksö and Nordhamnsbadet. And if that sounds too cold for you, you can also rent a sauna at the canoeing center. That'll cost you 950 Swedish crowns. It's not too expensive if you're a group, but I'm not gonna pay that by myself just for a sauna. And you won't have to see me naked, so it's a win-win situation. You can also rent a bike to see more of the island, or the islands. One company, Vaxholm Cykelutyning, claims that they are the best and the only bike rental company on the island. But there are even more exciting things to do. If you like a bit of climbing and jumping across chasms high up in the treetops, then you can visit Sky Park Vaxholm. And if you want to try something very much out of the ordinary, there are archaeological walks you can take around the island. But I think that the most popular thing to do on Vaxholm is to enjoy food and fika. Vaxholm has a lot of restaurants and cafes. Café Hembygdsgården, Hamnkrogen, Kabyssen and Bistro Magazinet, for example. Oh yeah, and this place, Sport Bar number 10. And if you're visiting Vaxholm Fortress, there's also Bistro Castellet over there. I don't think that there are any local specialties for Vaxholm in particular. It's all just good food. Some people claim that herring is a local specialty of the town, but uh, that's pretty much a specialty everywhere in the archipelago. If you're wondering what this is, it's ragmunk with pork. It's traditional Swedish food, potatoes and, well, pork. <laughs> Aside from food, you can also get traditional Swedish fika, of course. Cinnamon buns, baked goods, coffee, you know the drill when it comes to Swedish fika. You could also visit Vaxholm's glass bar for some ice cream, but it doesn't seem to be open any longer. I guess summer is pretty much over by now. I know that everyone hates seagulls, but it's impossible to not be happy when someone is feeding birds. And you might also want to visit Vaxholm's Choklad, a chocolate store in town. You can also book chocolate and licorice tastings at the store, but only on Saturdays, I believe. And today is Sunday, unfortunately. Licorice is actually considered a delicacy in Sweden, for some reason. I think it's some sort of masochism. But we're not done exploring Vaxholm. There's another interesting spot to visit. Bogesund Castle was built in 1640 and it lies 5 kilometers southwest of Vaxholm town. The castle was renovated in the 1860s and that's when it got its current look as a knightly castle with gothic windows. Sweden had a fascination with a variety of different architectural styles in the 1800s and this was a sort of medieval romanticism style. 
However, between 1906 and 1946, the castle stood empty until the state bought it. They actually made a new law called the Lex Bogesund just to be able to forcefully buy the castle. The owner couldn't afford the upkeep, so he let it decay for 40 years. That's why this new law was created, so that the state can forcefully buy a property that's being mistreated. And that law has just been used once to buy this castle. These days it seems like the place is being taken care of much better. If you want to enjoy more nature, Bogesund is also a great place for hiking. There's a nature preserve close to Bogesund Castle, filled with hiking trails as well as old Viking remnants. And mosquitoes. A lot of mosquitoes. Don't forget to buy mosquito repellent. There's one called Mygga in Swedish stores. Time for some practical information. So you decided that you want to visit Vaxholm. How do you get here? If you have a car, you can drive here. There are bridges all the way from Stockholm and also car ferries if you want to continue to Rinde. You can also take the bus here. It's the common Stockholm public transport, so just look up the timetable. But the most picturesque way to come here is by boat. If you're a lucky bastard with your own boat, you can drop in at the guest harbor. If not, you can take a boat with either Vaxholmsbolaget or Cinderella Båtarna. Vaxholmsbolaget is cheaper and has more boats per day. A round trip to Vaxholm is a bit less than 200 Swedish crowns. And if you can't get enough of your visit to the archipelago, you can also spend the night here. Places you can stay include Vaxholms bed and breakfast, Castellets bed and breakfast, Vaxholms hotel and Bogesund hostel. So basically, two bed and breakfasts, one hotel and one hostel. It's not a huge town, but you have some options at least. Something you should keep in mind is when you want to visit. I'm filming this on the last weekend of August, and after today the town basically goes into hibernation mode. You can still come here and visit the restaurants, and boats will travel here all year round, but things will slowly start to close down. Winter is a magical time in the archipelago, if you want calm and serene visits. If you actually want to do some activities here, and not just eat herring and look at snow, then you're best off visiting between June and August. And that's about it for this very quick look at Vaxholm, one of the most popular spots in the Stockholm archipelago. I hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe, but most importantly, have a great day. Now you can have a look at this video as well. I have a feeling you're gonna find it interesting if you liked this one.